When the working class does well, everybody does well. Everything is better for the wealthy, the super wealthy, and the slightly wealthy. Nobody gets hurt. So let's face these challenges head on. Let's keep building a better America. I want to thank you, and God bless you, and may God protect our troops. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Your response to Putin and Xi, sir. And my decision at the outset of our administration to buy American. It's always been the law, but very seldom ever followed. Now it's a reality, not an empty promise. I made clear that when the federal government spends taxpayer dollars, we buy American products. American products made in America, including all the component parts of that product. Chinese company and on health owns iHealth, which is um, one of the providers. They have a, they signed a $1.3 billion contract with the Pentagon last month for these tests. Is the administration concerned about sort of both the, the sort of optics and messaging of sending something to Americans' homes that says made in China on it at the same time that you're, you know, doing this thing that you consider to be a positive good for Americans. We also needed to meet a need that we had in this country for more tests and a shortage of tests and the understandable demand from people across this country to get tests and make them free and accessible, which required us purchasing some of those tests uh, from China in order to meet that demand. But uh, that doesn't change uh, our commitment to increasing our U.S. manufacturing to ensure that we will be able to meet that demand. By America. As President of the United States, I award contracts and I'm now making it the case, and we're just working, it's one of the reasons those jobs are up, is unless the product I'm purchasing for the American people was made in America and all of its component parts were made in America, we ain't buying it. We're just simply not buying it. For many Americans, wages are up this year. In January, wage increases were strong across the board, and that's good. We have to continue to keep wages growing. And we need even more high paying jobs. But, you know, wage growth is not keeping pace with inflation. Um, you know, and the president has been very focused on making sure that this recovery works for all workers. He likes to talk about building an economy from the middle, middle out. And, you know, certainly wage gains are an important piece of that puzzle. But we want to see that strong, sustained wage gains over time. Um, you know, and we do need to be uh, concerned about, you know, uh, whether or not there is any indications that that is affecting inflation. And again, you know, that is the Fed's job. But you know, let me remind you that, um, you know, that it, so far they are not keeping pace with inflation. So average people are getting clobbered by the cost of everything today. Gas prices of the pump are up. We're working to bring them down, but they're up. Food prices are up. We're working to bring them down as well. There's more than one way to help a family when it comes to their standard of living. We're going to work to bring down the prices that are way up, but guess what? Guess what? We're going to keep strengthening the supply chain to bring down the cost of every all these goods. Don't jump. Nobody earning less than four hundred thousand dollars a year would pay a single additional penny in taxes, not a single penny. Look, we can do this without increasing the deficit. Actually, we've reduced the deficit over three hundred billion. And seventeen Nobel laureates in economics came to me several months ago to say that this plan would not only not raise inflation, it would ease long-term inflationary pressures. As I say, as I wish the athletes well, I do not encourage them to speak out against the Chinese government there because I fear for their safety if they do. I would say to our athletes, you're there to compete. Do not risk incurring the anger of the Chinese government because they are ruthless. I know there is a temptation on the part of some to speak out while they are there. I respect that, but I also worry about what the Chinese government might do to their reputations, to their families. Gas prices are at a seven-year high here in the U.S. Um, right after OPEC again snubbed requests to increase production. And then there's this energy crisis in Western Europe brewing. Um, is there any point where the president would consider opening up uh, domestic production in order to mitigate some of this, the inflation, and you know, assist our allies in Western Europe? That, um, 
the president has been uh, has taken a number of steps um, in uh, recent uh, months to address uh, the gas prices, including tapping the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, uh, of course, conveying uh, clearly to uh, OPEC member countries and suppliers uh, that it's important to meet uh, the demand uh, on the market, and will continue to uh, to look at options uh, that can be done to lower gas prices for the American people. Uh, in terms of uh, whether or not there could be more um, uh, oil drilling, uh, you know, I'd point you to the oil companies on what available places they have and if they're maximizing that. My understanding is they're not. Is there any um, consideration for increasing, for instance, LNG export licenses? Uh, you know, I don't have anything to preview for you in terms of 